Welcome in here. Well, we have had a house full already. I know. We had Zoe and Matt Axton, and uh, you really were digging Charlie Crockett a little I bit earlier. I love Charlie Crockett. Yeah. I really do. And uh, I thought about you. You were out late last night. You were hanging, hanging out. Hanging out with Eric Church. Yeah. Luke Combs. Yeah. Bunch of ne'er-do-wells in the media at yeah. Chiefs downtown. Yeah. So the first thing I thought of this morning, knowing that you'd been out late and had to get up early, was Rosalie and Joe Maphis' words and Vern Gosden's big hit record of dim lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud music, Kelly Sutton. It's the only kind of life you'll ever understand. Dim lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud music. You'll never make a wife to a home-loving man. (laughs) Morning, Paul. (laughs) So wait a minute. He's used to it. You got Eric Church and Free Candy. And I got Larry Gatlin and our stage manager, Tyler Bryant. Oh, you got Gene Watson. I'm, there's free candy well, in the Opry. I, yeah. there's, there's a little candy in well, the Opry. Sister this Sadie. free. I bought it. Oh, oh okay. I feel so better. That feel oh, better. okay. Then maybe I got the better end of the deal. <laughs> good, okay. good, good. Well, I have yeah. free popcorn. So, oh, okay. good. All right. Yeah. When Kelly <laughs> goes out late and comes in with a little bag in her hand, we're oh, like, oh, no, we hope what it's What did you get? What did yeah. you get? <laughs> Yes. So, yeah, last night it was a preview of the opening of Chiefs. That is Eric Church's bar. We've been waiting for it, y'all. It did not disappoint. I've got all the details. They told me I wasn't supposed to take video. I walk in. Everybody has their phone out. Everybody's taking video. <laughs> of course. And I'm like, do I break the rules? Do I, what do I do? But then Eric came on stage and was talking, and I was like, I've got to video that, right? So we do have that. And I can tell you all about the bar and what it looks like. Plus, they have... A signature goo goo cluster that they do at Eric's bar. This is called the Bad Mother Cluster. You'll never make a wife to a home <laughs> loving man. Listen, I brought you a mother cluster, so you're happy <laughs> yeah, about it. Well, you've got to have at least two cups of coffee to be brave enough to say that. Oh, you know it. Yeah. You know it. We're going to try it on the air. It tastes like an old fashioned. In a goo goo cluster. No way. Yes. Oh. So we, I brought it. I brought knives. Right. We're going to cut it open and try this on the air <laughs> later on in the show. Right. Stay tuned for that. This is Coffee Country and Cody. With a brand new album, Colors, we welcome back. It's been way too long since we've seen you. Thanks so much for checking in on the social media to let me know you're available. And then, then you had to cancel and now we got back. a date that worked. <laughs> so. Welcome Carly Arrowwood, Thank along you. with her husband, Daniel Thrillkill, is yes. here this Thank morning you. on Coffee Country and Cody. Oh. And we have a baby. Baby oh, In a radio she's, station. She's in the back. She's, yes. She's hanging out. Ellie. She yeah. <laughs> but her full name is what? Eliana Hope. Yep. Eliana. Oh, that's beautiful. There she yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sandy. That, that, that's Grandma, Sandy, C- Carly's C- mom. Cindy. Uh, Cindy. Yep. And Cindy, uh, this is Cindy's first grandchild. Yep. She hasn't mm-hmm. put her down yet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's not quite walking yet. So. I saw a cartoon. Uh, somebody published a cartoon or maybe it was socials uh, when our granddaughter Lily was born. and mm-hmm. She was the only grandchild at that point. And they posted and it was Rebecca, my wife, perfectly. To a T. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> I have to see the baby there. The, <laughs> the mother is picking the child up from the grandparents and leaving. She says, no, but I have to see her <laughs> all the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> she's frantic the that time. She, she's being taken away. What's our uh, comedian friend, uh, Jeff Allen's great line? It's a God's reward for not killing your teenagers. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 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 Starts like not cooperating. It's like, here you go. You yeah. can have her back now. <laughs> That's right. Just the way it is. Way well, you got a brand new album. You two are musical collaborators as well as husband and wife. Mm-hmm. What's that dynamic like? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So we, especially with her now, because she just loves the music and she kind of does her little conductor finger and, you know, yeah, like that every time she hears all. anything, especially off the record. I mean, she loves bluegrass. You were flipping through stuff in the car yesterday and it, she only did that when she heard bluegrass. Oh, I know. So if anything else came out, she was just like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and a strange coincidence, speaking of bluegrass, it's how we met you many years ago. It Darren is. Darren and Brooke Aldridge in the studio, and you played fiddle for them, you said, mm-hmm. for five years. I and did. on the way to Nashville, you stopped in Asheville at the Chick-fil-A. And ran into them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we yeah. Well, it was either that or Bucky's, right? I mean, <laughs> oh. two places. Yeah. Yeah, if you'd have stopped at Bucky's, maybe they'd have been there too. They might have been. Yeah, by the time you got to Nashville. We might might hit the Bucky's on the way home. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Going Home, Coming On, it was the last album, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It was. And uh, 
was chasing indigo on that album no it's on so it, it's on colors it's on yeah. colors okay mm -hmm. yep. because that that's where i most recently heard your solo work mm -hmm. was when mm -hmm. Chase and Indigo, which Daniel, you wrote? I wrote with, we, with Carly. Yeah, wrote. Carly wrote most of that one. And then I'd sprinkle some inspiration every now yeah. and then. He was a little cherry on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a sweet song. We, we get uh, lots of really sweet sunsets at the top of our driveway. And um, the inspiration really came from that. Mm -hmm. um, Carly, Carly and I often went outside and just would look at the sunsets so to together. Just yep. lay on the pavement and watch the sun go down. Yep. So, yep. And we both were doing a lot of work. You know, Daniel is a wonderful Bible rebinder and has a shop in our in our garage and mm -hmm. does his work there. And so, you know, when, when he was doing that, <laughs> Ellie says, hey, <laughs> I can hear her over there. But when he was doing that a lot and I was doing my, like, book and work and, you know, music stuff from home, we would work late hours. Yeah. into the night and so that song kind of came out of a dry you know writing spell um, how did you how did you get into binding that's such an <laughs> interesting oh man. is it's, that it was started out as a hobby it started out as a hobby and then people just i posted photos online and people kept reaching out saying hey i need this done it's a i mean a lot of people need it done yep. um and so i've just kept on kept on getting people asking to do so, it so like family bibles yeah family gets, bibles because i was gonna say i've got my not, grandmother's and the yeah. front part of it is cracked mm -hmm. and a piece of it's missing yeah i know a guy i, I know, know a guy hey. that's awesome <laughs> yeah. that's really yeah, cool fun. people yeah. really trust you with that because those are mm -hmm. cherished mm -hmm. memories yeah oftentimes they are definitely as a wedding sure. gift from my wife i got her she was a history major in yeah. college and loved this the civil war was kind of her thing yeah and i found a bible from uh, from 1862 that's awesome so but it was one of those Oh, that's seriously oh, like this big yeah. it's like huge. it weighs like 40 pounds it's a lectern so. bible yeah, like it's, yeah. It's, it's exactly huge. yeah that's so what's awesome. the oldest one you've worked on 1873 and it was a uh -huh. small bible uh -huh. and the pages well, were so, the yeah, date, right? yeah. <laughs> the pages were like so thick um it, and so it it was really really cool like the the, the paper quality was so much better back then um it, which is surprising um they last a lot longer than they do nowadays but um but yeah there's a lot it's a lot of fun was the cover original cowhide it was not it was it was some sort of I'm, I'm not sure but it was a it was not it wasn't synthetic but it was it was some sort of cardboardy material that oh, was okay. that they, they would use back then um some sort of bonded yeah paper. bonded paper stuff um so I, I put it in goat skin and uh, or cowhide i might have done it in cowhide but yeah Absolutely. Does anybody ever request a particular leather? Or oh, all the time. Do they? I've done shark skin, um, which is awesome. Oh, that one <laughs> if went you've to seen Texas. Shark skin, you know that yeah. Bible went to Texas. <laughs> if it was a shark skin Bible, yeah. there's only one state. That or ostrich. Yeah, <laughs> ostrich. It's been done. It's I needed to done. match my boots That's on right. something. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, Carly, 4-H is where music starts for you as far as performing in front of people? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, I was nine when we were doing kind of a 4-H entertainment, um, I guess, event. And um, I saw a guy playing the fiddle. He was 13 at the time, Todd Elliott. Some of y'all might know that name, but uh, his dad's a storyteller. And I saw him playing. It was just him, and he was playing the fiddle and singing The Devil Went Down to Georgia. <laughs> And I was just like, I need to know how to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> we got in touch with his teacher, and uh, she started me with um, the Suzuki Method classical violin, and I did that for about four and a half years. And, and did, she rebelled. Did youth symphony, and I, I wanted to play fiddle from the beginning, and so um, it was just kind of funny how that started. So. And yeah. what is specific to Suzuki when you say that method? Because I hear that all the time related to young fiddle players yeah, or I mean, violinists. I honestly can't tell you because okay. I was so young when I started. I was just, you know, that's what you did with Suzuki. And there's just certain methods that um, they have in the front of the book. And it tells you how to hold the bow and how to, you know, practice certain bowings and slurs with this bow and stuff. Yeah, I guess. it's, it's a regimen just of, of like uh, specific specific tunes that you can sight read yeah. and just learn good intonation and how to hold a bow and yeah. they, they have one for guitar that i i have not done but okay um, <laughs> yeah they have one for guitar. classical guitar as well so. okay yeah do you yeah. think that classical core though is a good foundation i yeah. think so yeah i mean i had a lot of techniques that i had learned that i probably wouldn't have gotten if i just started you know dove head mm -hmm. first into fiddle mm -hmm. And when I was teaching, I would always try to help my students do that. Like, not necessarily teach Suzuki, but um, just make sure, you know, they knew how to hold the fiddle right and not, like, way down here. Some people, like, way down and, you know, make sure you get your left wrist right and your right wrist right. And um, 
you know, different techniques. And so, yeah, it does help a lot. So does the devil went down to Georgia ever make it into the set list? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we get tons of requests for it. And uh, like, not, no, not to play it on stage, but I have people come up and say, can you play that song? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can. <laughs> but, Alan, Alan Jackson, the pastor at World Outreach Church in Murfreesboro, <laughs> once had Charlie Daniels play it. That's where Charlie and Hazel went to church. And he yeah. said, I am not playing that song in a church house. Oh, my <laughs> he said, yeah. oh yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so he wound up playing it one oh, Sunday. <laughs> different yeah. meaning, a little different. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious because Charlie was with Sister Sadie last night at mm -hmm. the Opry. Yeah. Uh, anywhere in the Suzuki metal method does it say you need to stand up on your tiptoes when you play like uh, Dee like Richardson Dean. does? Uh, uh, probably not. But, you know. <laughs> I mean, she makes it work. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she does, doesn't she? You got to get into it. I, I was told, you know. I, I would have a hard time being a fiddle player because I stood still, but it was just because I was focusing. So I couldn't read music that well. I would always just hear it and play. And so when I finally started actually learn, leaning away from just reading the music, then my body, I just kind of started dancing and getting into it. I was yeah. like, oh, that's how it's supposed to be. You just feel it. And so. when did you realize you had the, the ability to sing as well as play? Um, I grew up singing in church. Oh, okay. So... Um, I don't remember a time I, I wasn't singing, I guess, but yeah. um, I was in a band with my sister, Autumn, and um, I sang a lot of the lower end harmony part just because we were so little, you know, mm -hmm. we were young, and I was the oldest one, so I would just grab the lowest part and let a lot of the other ones sing lead, and uh, as I joined Darren and Brooke, I went from, you know, that low end to the, the higher stuff above Brooke, you know, and Brooke's a powerhouse. So that really pushed my limits a little bit. And so I was like, oh, I guess I can do a little bit more than I thought I could. <laughs> well, let's listen to that. Isn't that beautiful? So what a melody. I love that. Ellie loves it, too. Oh, she yeah. does. She's <laughs> over there like this. Just Favorite watching. song. Yeah, fun fact. She was two weeks old. She had a little little tantrum, and we turned it on because we had been recording it when I was pregnant with her, and so she had heard it a lot. And when she heard it, she was like, I know this song. Oh, <laughs> oh, she that. was two weeks old, yeah. Carly so. Arrowwood, Daniel Thrailkill, her husband, and uh, mm -hmm. they co-wrote that and performed it for us live on Coffee Country and Cody this morning. And uh, so many famous folks in the music business are so fond of you and have given oh. quotes on your website. John Weisberger, uh, Jimmy Fortune, our mm -hmm. longtime friend, oh, yeah. uh, Kristen Scott Benson. Mm -hmm. And then I see a quote from your friend Becky Buller on yeah. here, who I know at this moment, if, if she is alive, <laughs> she is listening slash watching right. Coffee Country and Cody. Love She's you, taken Becky. pictures and already posted them on Facebook. <laughs> Carly Arrowwood, accompanied by her husband Daniel this morning. Thank you for sharing your great talent with Thank us. Thank you for having us. And all the best in your career and in your marriage. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, a company in the background there, maybe maybe you could hear <laughs> Ellie, that baby girl. How old is she? She'll be 10 months on Sunday. So. All right. Yep. Well, thank you again for coming yes. to see us. Thank you for having us. Such a treat. From Newton, North Carolina oh, to Nicholas. WSM, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> Woo! Or Kelly Sutton hanging out with Eric Church last night. You're awake now. Yeah, it's Coffee Country and Cody, okay. WSM Radio. All our Circle streaming platforms at circlecountry.com. And Circle Now available in your app store. Great thing about that, on demand for up to 24 hours. Okay. You ready for a it? A home and little children mm -hmm. mean nothing to you. A house filled with love and a husband so true. You'd rather have a drink with the first guy you meet. The only home you know is the bar down the street. Please well, welcome. Well, it's a new bar. <laughs> <It's> nice. <laughs> I, you say all that like it's a bad thing. I don't understand. Please welcome Kelly Sutton. <laughs> I mean, I felt great about it. <laughs> it's open, y'all. Chiefs, it is on the corner. You cannot miss it. If you come to Nashville and you are walking or driving down Broadway, you cannot miss it. Truly at the corner of 2nd Avenue and Broadway. Now, this used to be the Cotton Eye Joe souvenir shop. Mm -hmm. So if you were familiar and you stumbled across from, I don't know, maybe you were at Acme, which is across the street, or directly across the street is the Hard Rock Cafe. Mm -hmm. So if you've walked in there at some point, then you've probably been in that building. They've taken it completely apart. When we were there last night, we got to see a video of the construction Holy cow. At one point, it was four brick walls and just an empty shell inside. And Nothing. how many stories? 
It is six stories tall. I knew it, it was is massive. More than most of them. Yes. Well, and when they told us that we could come last night, they said, do not take pictures of video because we really want the church choir to be the first ones. And that's his, of course. But um, you did it anyway, didn't his you? His fan account. Because this is what we expect from you. Well, I didn't until I saw everybody else doing it. And then I just took a little video. <laughs> it was just honor, of him. Your honor, I didn't until everybody else did it. I saw everybody else doing it. So I figured, I mean, you can't arrest us all. <laughs> <laughs> Eric was there. He talked about how this all came to be, and there's a very interesting story. So I will let Eric Church tell you the story. They original songs. They want other people's songs. They didn't want a singer. They didn't want a guitar player. They didn't want a bartender. Tried that. So I had to find my tribe, and um, I found my way to Printer's Alley, which is a place that runs on heartbreak and cocaine. <laughs> And I found my way to the fiddle and steel guitar bar. And this sign, this is the actual sign. It's no longer there. That is the sign that used to hang there. And in that place, I found all the other people that they didn't want on Broadway. And I found my people. So the idea for Chiefs and the idea for what this is, is to give those people a chance and a voice to be back on Broadway. So the very first part of it you didn't get. He said, I came to town and I came to Broadway and I wanted to play and they didn't want me here because he wanted to do original songs and they only wanted people who were doing cover songs at the time. And that's how he ended up in Printer's Alley. And then in Printer's Alley, he said, I found my tribe. These are my people. Mm -hmm. So now his place is going to be dedicated to people who want to play their music and last night i walked in and you know who was on stage mm. very first stage that you come to on the first floor the reeves brothers they huh. were right there in the front oh no kidding yes and they've been guests on the show several times they have so first floor is a bar second floor piano bar so big beautiful baby grand piano third and fourth floor that's the neon steeple that he was telling us about and that's where he was standing so that's third floor but the fourth floor overlooks where he was standing mm -hmm. and they're all church pews and there are stained glass ah. windows and in the stained glass windows are all of the people who were great so you have dolly parton you have uh michael jordan in his north carolina jersey <laughs> shooting a shot you've got uh johnny cash given the finger so that's now in stained glass which finger specifically are you referencing that one yeah you know the one yeah uh, Prince, Not the one you're holding up now. No. But, okay. Prince, there is a a stained glass window of Prince in the bathroom. There is a stained glass window of Michael Jackson in the corner. I mean, it is the coolest. I will tell you, it is one of the coolest bars I've ever been in. Well, Charlie and I want to know where the shooting range and the tomahawk throw. Where Where's that located? We'll no, that's that a, they haven't finished that. Yet. Oh, okay. Like <laughs> now, the fifth floor is a full-on barbecue joint, and the top <laughs> is the rooftop bar. As I was leaving, I went into the gift shop. I saw that they have their own Goo Goo Cluster. It even says cheese right there on the Goo Goo Cluster. So this has cherry, orange, and it also has his whiskey, because you know he has his own Yeah, whiskey signature line. Mm -hmm. So it has his whiskey in it. I'm going to cut this open, and we're going to taste it on the air. This is the Goo Goo Cluster. By we're going to taste it, you're going to taste it? No, I'm going to give you a And tell us how bite. great it is? No, I'm okay. going to give you a bite. Thank I'm you. cutting it. That's why I brought a knife out here. And spent your own money on this. I this did. Is, yeah. And they're proud of these. <laughs> you don't think well, I'm Well, you're going to expense it, right? Uh, $15. <laughs> no. Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, they are. They're pricey. Oh, but she's going to, hey. That's pricey. That's gourmet. It's pricier than the hotel. That's it's hard gourmet. to do. <laughs> She's right. going to expense it for twenty five. So there you oh, go. Okay. Here you go. All Everybody, right. take a little well, that sample looks of delicious it. Delicious there. Yeah. yeah. So just to give you, um, it's the Bad Mother Cluster, <laughs> and inside we have cherry nougat, dried cherries, caramelized white mm -hmm. chocolate, candied orange peel, mm -hmm. chocolate covered potato chips, single barrel Chiefs Edition whiskey caramel, covered mm -hmm. in dark chocolate mm -hmm. with a bourbon smoked sea salt base. Sounds delicious. You are so brave saying the name of that candy. The Bad Mother Cluster? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right. Okay. That's oh, that kind of, oh no. that's really good. Wow. It's kind of like an old-fashioned, but, but that in chocolate. But crunchiness is, yeah. is light, so like, like a wafer almost. That's your ASMR for the morning, is us eating on the air. Mm-hmm.
Thank you to Eric Church. Thank you to Chiefs. Also, by the way, Luke Combs was there, just random, hanging out upstairs. How many did he eat? I don't know. I didn't see him. He was over in the corner. I was like, why is Luke Combs here? Oh, he's doing recon because he's opening a bar. So he's like, I want that. I want that. I don't like that. Anyway, it was fun. He's on his third mother cluster. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, a little coffee with that. There's mm-hmm. something about all those flavors that you describe coming together. The coffee is just perfect. You like it, Charlie? Uh, it's a very unique flavor profile. Mm-hmm. I'll put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, an ooey gooey chewy, too. Mm-hmm. Your dentist will love you. Yes. <laughs> More coffee, country, and Cody is on WSM. <laughs> For those of you watching on Circle, <laughs> Charlie Meadows return. <laughs> I like Robin Williams in one hour photo. It's just creepy. It's not... <laughs> or The Shining. Something oh, out of The Shining, you know, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to be able to see yeah, that. For the radio audience, yeah. I apologize. But uh, yeah, that was really... <laughs> For the TV audience, I apologize. <laughs> yes. We apologize for that, too. Yes. Circle streaming platforms at circlecountry.com and Circle Now, which is available in your app store, on demand programming up to 24 hours. And as I celebrate 30 years officially later in the month, here's a guy I have known for almost that entire time, it seems. His name is Ken Beck. And if you look up Ken Beck author, all kinds of books will appear. Mm-hmm. But the early books were all about a place called Mayberry. Mm. Yeah. And uh, the Andy Griffith show. Yeah. And then later on, a cowboy cookbook that I actually have an entry in. Right. Ken Beck, welcome back to Coffee Country and Cody. This usually happens over near where you live on the front porch of the Cracker Barrel Old Country Store around Wilson County Fair yeah, time, yeah. it seems. <laughs> but you texted me a while back and emailed me and said, I got a book coming out on the opening day of Major League Baseball. Well, immediately, ding, 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 my, and I thought Charlie Maddox is going to mm-hmm. love this. No matter mm-hmm. what the storyline is, he's going to love it because it's a baseball book. Mm-hmm. It's a baseball story. Yeah. And you did on the 28th. It's, so it's available everywhere that books are sold? It's uh, on AmazonBooks.com. AmazonBooks.com. Yeah. Yeah. We first know you uh, in Nashville as a writer for the Tennessean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so give us the backstory, your history, a little bit. Uh, had an all-American childhood. My dad was in the Air Force. We moved around a lot, but most of my life was in the South and Southwest. And uh, in the third grade, my dad had to go to Korea, South Korea. We couldn't go. So we, my mom decided to stay in this small town in Arkansas where my father's grandparents lived. And so in the uh, summer of 1961, I started playing Little League Baseball, third grade. Played one game, Dad came home, and we moved. <laughs> so then we went to uh, Dell City, Oklahoma, which is there's an Air Force base outside of Oklahoma City. And uh, they didn't have Little League. They had YMCA baseball. But in 1961 was when Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris were both going after Babe Ruth's 60 home run uh-huh. mark. And that's what really got me intrigued in baseball, and I started collecting baseball cards. How old are you at this point? 70, uh, 9 or 10. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anyway, I started collecting baseball cards, and I think every boy in America probably first loved the Yankees, but after a year of living in Oklahoma, I realized the St. Louis Cardinals are here, so I, the Cardinals became my team. And I just uh, I played baseball in the summer every day. We th- lived in the suburbs. We would meet in different backyards, all had different ground rules, but we played on an organized team, and after, every afternoon we'd have practice at 5, and we'd play two games a week in the summer, maybe 12 games, on a very simple, on a school field, backstop, no lights. At the end of the season, we would play on a lighted diamond. It was very simple, um, and it was. But so anyway, I wanted I wanted to write something about the love of baseball that the kids, the boys of the '50s and '60s, enjoyed, and um, so I, I titled my book "For the Love of Stan Musial." It could be called "For the Love of Baseball," but really, it is. It's just about the the joy of playing baseball when you're. You know, 10 to 12, 13 years old. So did you guys have ghost runners when you didn't have enough guys to, oh, to make a team? Oh, I ghost did. runner on second. Yep. yep. Yes, and they're trying to ruin baseball by actually making that a reality in the 10th <laughs> inning and put, just give you a guy on second base. But anyway, <laughs> wow. uh, don't get me started on rule changes. But <laughs> Commissioner uh, Mattos has yeah, spoken. Yeah, so, you know, for me, it was uh, uh, the, the, the book that changed my childhood was Ball Four. Jim Bouton's book. Mm-hmm. I mean, I liked baseball. That book made me love baseball because it made all these superheroes so human. And mm-hmm. I, I just, I, it's one of the funniest books I've ever written. Is that ball, you've read Ball Four? I'm oh, assuming yeah. it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you write, uh, set in a small southern town during the spring summer of 63. So I would have been five, mm-hmm. six. 
The plot centers on four boys whose friendship blossoms as they play their favorite sport, and then they take a road trip, and therein lies the story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, take us down to the bus station. So, so three of the boys are white. One of the boys is black, and he's deaf. And, and this was the era of segregation. And uh, did you know someone who fit that description as a well, kid in Oklahoma? I, I, I really didn't at that point in my okay, age. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, but I, I wanted to have a, a, a black youth in it, and... Um, He's really the best player on the team. He, and actually, he couldn't play on their on their team. He had to play in a black group, we're all black team. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they they have a treehouse, and they're going. They're getting out of the sixth grade, fixing to go to junior high. So they prick their fingers and become blood brothers, oh. and say, "Let's take a vow." <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and uh, they decide to ask their parents if they would let them go on their own to St. Louis, take the bus, and see their first major league baseball game. And of course, at at that point in time. Uh, before 1958, the Cardinals was the furthest west and furthest, furthest south Major League Baseball team. So if you lived anywhere in that area, you heard Harry Carey and Jack Buck, and the Cardinals were your team, and Stan Musial was Stan the Man. Um, so that's their favorite player. So to make a long story short, yes, they, they earn money picking up pop bottles, two cents a bottle, and mowing yards and caddying and things like that. They, they take the bus. They get about halfway to St. Louis, Stop at, a, stop at a truck stop and uh, go down to sit, sit on the counter to order, they, they, won't, they won't take an order from the black boy. Uh -huh. So the other boys say, well, we're not going to eat, eat here either. So they, they go down a half a mile or so to a little dairy dip, and they forget what they're doing, and the bus leaves them. So, so it's sort of a road trip and some complications trying to get to St. Louis. Uh, and, and the game itself is actually a, a real game. Everything in, about the game is accurate. And uh, they're trying to, like I say, they're trying to see, see Stan Musial. Do they? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever meet Stan Musial? I, I didn't. But, uh, I, I had a normal toy. Is this childhood. on the dashboard of your truck? No, it's not. <laughs> this, Instead this, of a bobblehead. <laughs> the only thing that survived my childhood is, is this is a Heartland statue. They made about 15 Major League Baseball players. I, I don't know what happened to the bat. Uh, but uh, so I, I had to... I never went to that ballpark. My wife and I, when we raised our kids, we went to every major league ballpark. And so they would have played where? Sport, Sportsman's Park, which was started in the 1890s. It became Bush Stadium when uh, the owners of uh, Anheuser-Busch bought it. Right. And um, anyway, uh, so I had to do a lot of research. I never saw that park. And I've got baseball books of all kinds describing the old parks. But I connected with the Cardinals organization, and they gave me the names of a number of people who would have gone to games in the 50s and 60s and met Stan Musial, fans. Yeah. And so I got great details about the ballpark and, and Stan Musial. One of the more interesting things about that ballpark was the right field uh, wall had a screen going all the way up. There, it had a pavilion roof. To hit a home run, you had to hit it over the roof. <laughs> so Stan Musial hit 475 home runs. The Cardinals in 1955 took the screen down to see who hit more home runs, their team or their opponents. And they found out they did, but they put it back up. But if they'd left it down, Stan Musial, instead of 475 home runs, would have had 676 home runs. Oh. Sixth on the all-time list. Wow. <laughs> the research that Ken Beck puts into his work is just extraordinary, and I love you for it. Ken, thanks for your friendship through the years, and congratulations on the new book, which has been out for about a week. For the love of Stan Musial, Amazon Books is where you get it, right? Right. How's grandfatherhood, bud? What's that? Your grandfatherhood, how is it? It's great. Yeah? It's great. How many you got? Three. Yeah? How old? <laughs> Seven, uh, four, and two. Um, <laughs> they play baseball, any of them? No, not yet. But they're, okay. but they're wearing me and my, my wife out, let me tell you that. Okay. <laughs> Coffee, Country, and Cody highlighting the exhibit American Currents, State of the Music. On display at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. We see the Laney Wilsons and the Kelsey Ballerinis, but then we have people that we know are incredible artists and are starting to really see their journey develop, like Billy Strings. Billy Strings is has been in this exhibit for several years at this point. He just, you know, keeps keeps it going, <laughs> keeps making us decide that he needs to be in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, he had a huge year. You know, he I saw him play Newport Folk Festival. He uh, played the Willie Nelson, the 90th mm -hmm. birthday shows. Um, he's just 
he's exploding and whether you're hearing him on you know mainstream radio or not he's got this fan base that is is ready to to show up and, and show out um he gave us some cool stuff too he always delivers with just really unique things um this year the the one that seems to be attracting everybody is um the lyrics the early lyrics to California Sober, his song with Willie Nelson. It's yes. not a piece of cardboard. It's just like <laughs> taken and scribbled and you know, that's how inspiration strikes and when it strikes and you just kind of figure out a way to record it too. American Currents, check it out. Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, y'all. And you don't have to go to the hall, this is moment in time right. for Poets and Prophets because Poets and Prophets came to us. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2.30 tomorrow at the Country Music Hall of Fame, Jackie DeShannon, Poets and Prophets, well, hello, old friend, Michael Gray. Hey, Bill. Good morning. You're the one who's moderating this. Yes, sir. I'm, I have that privilege. <laughs> and we have the privilege of meeting her, for me, the first time. Kelly, mm -hmm. you? First you time, as well? yeah. Well, I, I'm, it's such an honor for me to be here. I, WSM has just been my Bible. And to as a young girl growing up, to uh, have an opportunity to hear a record or to be on a program or interview, it just it just seemed like an impossible dream, but mm -hmm. it did come true, and here I am. <laughs> so you would have grown up in the shadow of this signal in Hazel, oh, Kentucky? Absolutely. On this the border is, with oh, yes. what, Callaway uh, County? Ten, uh, yes, that's mm -hmm. correct, and you walk across the street and you're in Tennessee. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I just, you know, this, this was the Bible, and... Uh, um, whatever you all said, that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> it was the gospel, right? It was the gospel. I understand. Exactly, exactly. So it's a great honor to be here, really. Are you, It's so special, I can't really tell you, and, and I can't find the words to tell you how important and, and you, this, you all have played in, in my career. Well, uh, first, let me say greetings from Brenda Lee. She would oh, want me to my mention oh. her to you. <laughs> Uh, because your name comes up every time we visit. We do a presentation oh. for Leadership Music, Jackie DeShannon's she, name. She's and, the best. And all the things that you've accomplished musically oh. that people aren't aware that you wrote songs that are just American standards. And they go, I didn't I didn't know she wrote that. Oh, Because oh. you didn't sing it necessarily. That, no, that's true. Uh, and we'll get to some of that list here in a moment, But uh, Brenda is the reason that I'm here. She gave, us, she gave me my first start with the hit song, Dum Dum, and recorded several of the songs. And she's, you know, she's just uh, the best. She's so unique, so gifted, so talented. And Brenda paved the way. Mm -hmm. For so many of the artists that are successful today, including she, the Beatles, including the Beatles, everybody <laughs> else, we all wanted to be like Brenda, but there's only Brenda, and uh, I'm so grateful to her. Well, Kelly, if she weren't so shy and introverted, <laughs> that Brenda Lee. Which one, Jackie or Brenda? Because both of them. You know, in talking to her and seeing the success and yours paralleling at the same time with so many of your songs going to her, how did your song wind up in Brenda's hands? How did that happen? Well, uh, I was with uh, Liberty Records uh, Arm Publishing Company, Metric Music, and of course, um, I just idolized Brenda, and uh, we wrote for Brenda, and only okay. Brenda, okay. keeping her in mind. There was absolutely no one else that you know, we wanted to write for. Our, our goal was to have a song recorded by Brenda Lee, and then that, would, that was, you know, that's it for had, us. Was it six? At, pardon? Did you have six that, that you did with Brenda? We, I, yeah, I, some of them, I, I, I just, I go back now and I look at it, I think, oh, wow, we did that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, as one creeps up the ladder in age, uh, but uh, it, you know, there was no, I, I don't think anything has really topped that experience, yeah. having her record a song of mine and having it be a hit, that I've I've done it all. That's it. I've got my Brenda Lee records, and I'm I'm good. 1965. Everything changes for you. There's a song from Hal David and Burt Bacharach that comes into your life. Yes. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, and it holds up today. Yeah. Today as much as it did in 1965. Well, thank you. I'm very proud to say that uh, my records in the Library of Congress. It was just voted in this here, last here. time. So I, I'm so blessed to have that. But um, it was a song that Burt played for quite a few artists, and they turned it down. Did I Dion didn't... turn it down? Yes. 
No kidding. Yes. Because famously, they they had so much success well, together, Dion Warwick. We we actually, um, when we were rehearsing it, rehearsing um, of the songs that we were selecting for the recording session in New York, um, Hal David kept saying, Bert, play what the world needs now is love. And, uh, <laughs> and we would just, you know, rehearse some more, a few songs, and I'd sing them, and Bert, Play what the world needs now for Jackie. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Finally, it goes on, and Hal just said, okay, let's, come on now, let's do this. So I think word was out that later on I learned that he he was shy about playing it because so many people had passed on the song. Not so many, but whoever he mm-hmm. played it for. And, of course, it had cornfields and wheat fields, and I grew up on a farm, and that hit home so hard for me. And I believe that that chorus, what the world, I think it has gospel. It's yeah. Gospel changes. Absolutely. You, you feel that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What the world? You know, I just feel that God, and so I was home free with that song. <laughs> that, that played right into me. And uh, when, he, when I learned it and when he heard me sing it, he just... He thought it was the greatest, and they just said, that's it, off to Bell Sound, we're going to New York, and that's how that record happened. And it's interesting because although we rehearsed it many times, that's, that was recorded live. There were no punch-ins, no, uh, you know, we'll take this little bit and, th- you know, make this no note sound better, nothing. Yeah. It was just right. In a couple of takes, we, we had it. That's how good you are. <laughs> well, I had I had a lot of help, but you know, we were all in that little studio at Bell Sound. It just was so interesting. Um, I'm in my little vocal booth, and it it was really a, a quite a quite a happening. We're gonna feature that first, Charlie. Let's do that. Let's make those memories of 1965, and then Michael Gray will come back to tell what poets and prophets will be like with Jackie DeShannon tomorrow, 2:30, Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. This is Coffee. Country and Cody. Coffee, Country and Cody. Highlighting the exhibit, Eric Church. Country heart, restless soul. On display at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. When he came on the scene, there was a different look. We didn't have cheap yet with the sunglasses. Right, no sunglasses. There are so many early photos with no sunglasses and you forget that that was a thing. Right. Um, And that really comes about when you get to the chief era. Okay. But you know, you, you have to get through first kind of the little bit of a struggle to get played on the radio to, you know, to find fans. But once you find them and you grasp them, they're all in. And that's really the thing that kind of runs throughout is how how good he, he is with that, um, including Bruce Springsteen. Look at that. I know. There's, a, there's correspondence with Bruce Springsteen. It's in great. Her. Yeah. So obviously the song Springsteen, yeah. um, Bruce heard it, basically got this note to Eric. It's on the back of a set list from a show that's, you know, miles long and really goes to show kind of what he would do later with his, you know, yeah. back-to-back sets and no openers and that, you know, the tours later on in his career. Yeah. Kelly Sutton gets a fun assignment every now and then. I know I do. <laughs> Man, that was really special. Yeah. And then to be at his bar that he opened last night. I yep. mean, Eric is on everybody's lips. You can go see it. Do you think we could get a writer's night uh, for Jackie DeShannon on stage at Chiefs? You think we could work that out? A hundred percent. She walks in the door and they're like, the floor is yours, ma'am. That's Poets absolutely. and prophets for her tomorrow, 2.30 with this family. He's going to uh, be the moderator of the, the session. Poets and prophets, 2.30, Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. Michael Gray, our longtime friend. I'm going to let you pick up Jackie's story for just a moment here and what you've learned and the fact you brought the newspaper with you today. There's something special in there. Yeah, she's I, on the front page of the Tennessee in this morning above the fold, above the fold with the and she's section. the center fold as I told <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was that was a nice way to wake up this morning yeah so so how long um, ago did poets and prophets start and where are you where does Jackie fall as far as the number you know um it started in 2007 now we've been trying to get Jackie here for years and years and years we've, we're, we're close to 50 not quite there okay. yet but and where's home for you now Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Okay. Yeah. California. So, <laughs> yeah. So I've been I've been 
you know, um, working with Jackie, trying to get her to Nashville. She hasn't, you know, she hasn't been to Nashville in a long, long time. And um, I knew that she had ties to Nashville and country music. And, and I just wanted to explore, you know, those parts of her career. And, and the fact that she, you know, Poets and Prophets shines a spotlight on songwriters. And she wrote classic songs like Put a Little Love in Your Heart and Betty Davis Eyes and When You Walk in the Room and on and on. All those songs for Brenda Lee we talked about. And, yeah. And, and uh, so about, what, four years of 69 from Put a Little Love in Your Heart? Yes. And, and again, it was funny, I looked this up to see just how many genres appreciated and played that song. R&B, soul, pop, holiday, rock, folk. Can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a format, we'll Love play that. it. Love yeah, it. yeah, Love that's that. just how big yeah. that song was and how well it crossed over. And Michael, for the first time, we have outgrown the Ford Theater. We're in the big house tom uh, tomorrow afternoon. That's right, yeah. We're, we're going to be in the CMA Theater with Jackie at 2.30. Um, I'll interview her, man. We pulled together all these wonderful uh, film clips of her performing with Country Music Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame members like Johnny Cash and Eddie Arnold and the Everly Brothers and Willie Nelson and uh, Glenn Campbell. And, you know, we've got all that footage we're going to show. And, and afterwards, uh, Jackie's going to sign commemorative hat show print posters mm -hmm. and uh, and an album. There's a uh, this cool record label called Sunday's Records um, put out um, highlights from her radio show when she was a teenager in Illinois performing country and some rockabilly music uh, back in the mid 50s and and so that just all that recently just came out and she'll sign copies of those albums yeah. Kelly after all these years and these accolades she's back at the merch table after the show That's signing right. autographs. we didn't know you had a DJ background you just come on in oh, anytime this is awesome it's really interesting well my mom my mother which I really wasn't aware of uh she recorded a lot of these shows. And so you're going to hear, you know, me selling gasoline. <laughs> oh! Stop by the so and so place. And uh, uh, yeah, we had to have sponsors, you of know. Of course. So, we still do on the Grand Ole Opry. We do live commercials. <laughs> well, a we lot of times in small market radio, you'd go sell your own show during the day. Uh, absolutely. And then come do your shift. That's exactly right. <laughs> and record right. the commercials or do them live. That's wow. right. Yeah. And so I used to do that too. That's great. It was, uh, but I love radio. Radio is my first love. Well, tell me about Nashville, the Opry specifically. Was that a part of your. Oh, yeah. Well, I. When I, you know, was very young, I my big dream was to be with Ernest Tubb on his midnight show. Uh -huh. And so I would just hang out and hang out and hang out until he, <laughs> until he, oh, not her again, please. <laughs> so, so, so he, that's how I got my introduction for, from that. The was Ernest, show, was Ernest, Ernest Tubb, Tubb, the yes. Midnight Jamboree? Absolutely, that's me. I had no Here idea. I am. <laughs> and then where did that lead you? Did, well, did, um, did that lead you to the he, stage of the opera at any point? Um, I, you know, was back and forth and recording demos and whatnot. And uh, I recorded this song, Buddy. And that kind of, you know, broke out for me. And mm -hmm. uh, that was how I got with Liberty Records. But it all came from Nashville because. I really was geared with my family playing, you know, country music. We had jam sessions on the weekends. And so it was just a natural thing. And, and I was obviously set for that direction. But with that recording uh, and signing with Liberty, they they wanted me to go in a, a more pop or a different mm -hmm. direction. I don't know what, it, what the name was back then. But so actually as a songwriter then I was signed to their publishing company and that you know took me in a little different direction so mm -hmm. I didn't get the foothold that I really wanted to have in you know in straight country music mm -hmm. so but you I always had it in my heart mm -hmm. and uh, you know you came along the peak of your success during a time period unlike any other in my lifetime and really in entertainment and that is the golden age of the variety show yes where you were in everybody's living room and it's where <laughs> it's people who only loved country music were introduced to pop stars and r&b stars movie stars all that because they watched dean martin and bob hope and andy williams and the people who had those kinds of shows and you would have played all of them i played a great many of them yes but but i love that i love that era because there are there was really no discrimination on, on music. I mean, mm -hmm. um, we had a soul record on the same station that we had a, a pop 
pop record or what was considered a pop record. Um, so many different styles. You had the Motown sound. Everything was in on one uh, playlist. Right. So it was a great variety. I, I miss that now. So, okay. Michael, the tale is on how people can be a part of it with you tomorrow with Jackie DeShannon. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Yeah, 2.30 tomorrow inside the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in our CMA Theater. And uh, if you buy... Um, a ticket to the museum um, gets you into all the galleries and all the exhibits, but then it also gets you, you know, into this program at no extra cost. And um, and I'll interview Jackie for you know a good hour, maybe hour and a half, and then she'll do the signing afterward. So. And one of the great perks about being a museum member mm -hmm. is all of these programs are included with your membership as well, right. too. Right. So, and I think uh, it'd be nice because you got 800 seats to play with, too. Yeah. So we're not going to have to turn too many people away, you know. And so, I think nice. you get an eight by ten glossy autographed by Kyle Young. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tease me. Well, we use that as our dartboard. Uh, no, I just oh. that was a joke. <laughs> Morning, Kyle. How you doing there, pal? A little more of me in my monitor, there please. You go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mr. White and his steel guitar would mm -hmm. like some more monitor kelly sutton what's well, up i just saw this come across by my the way desk. you're right we did have a dog and a baby in the studio this morning best day ever <laughs> best day ever i got so excited i was like oh they brought a dog and we've had a baby so i just saw this come across cole ford suffered a heart attack uh he is currently in the hospital this was he was at dirk Bentley's whiskey row in gilbert arizona and apparently, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out if it happened when he was actually on stage. Ooh. But yeah, he was out there um, and they said he is now in intensive care at a hospital in Mesa, Arizona. So, well, you know, he had it. suffered from uh, yeah. some form of palsy or. Well, he had an autoimmune disease yeah. called myothecina gravis. Yes. And there's no cure for it. It infects the muscles in your face, your eyes, and your throat. And when he was with us last, his he was bouncing back, but he was obviously affected by and it. And he had eye cancer in 2022. <sighs> so he's been through a lot. But thoughts yeah. and prayers definitely with Colt today as he is continuing to recover in a hospital in Mesa, Arizona. Well, let's talk about CMT Awards happening on Sunday. It's the big deal. Everybody's excited about it. Sam Hunt is excited, but also a little nervous. It has <laughs> been a minute since he's performed at an award ceremony. Here's what he had to say about it. Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> he does not have anything to say about it. Here's what he had to say about it. He said, I did a run of <laughs> award shows for years. I haven't done any in a while, especially the country music award shows. He said, probably the last time I did this was maybe 2016, 2017. So he hasn't performed at an award show in a minute but he is excited to be a part of this one coming up lots of people going to be on stage performing this weekend as well full list of performers everything that you need to know you can go to cmt.com also if you still want to vote for video of the year it's vote.cmt.com that's where you can find the info and vote on your favorite opening of chiefs happened last night it's the big beautiful shiny new jewel in the heart of nashville on broadway and second avenue six stories tall this is eric church's behemoth it's nice let me tell you here's why he decided he needed a footprint in downtown nashville take a listen they didn't want original songs they want other people's songs they didn't want a singer they didn't want a guitar player they didn't want a bartender Try that so i had to find my tribe and um I found my way to Printer's Alley, which is a place that runs on heartbreak and cocaine. And I found my way to the fiddle and steel guitar bar. And this sign, this is the actual sign. It's no longer there. That is the sign that used to hang there. And in that place, I found all the other people that they didn't want on Broadway. And I found my people. So. The idea for Chiefs and the idea for what this is is to give those people a chance and a voice to be back on Broadway. He's doing it too. There's a bar when you first walk in with a stage for people to perform, a piano bar on the second floor, and then you've got the neon steeple, 350 seats, complete with stained glass windows and church pews for everybody to sit in. 
Well, we're going to close with uh, a song that goes back to the 60s from the Bill and Gloria Gaither catalog that Reba McIntyre performed on our stage. Our stage being the one that made country music famous. So Aaron Cooper, Andy Nye, counting us down to the weekend on Coffee, Country, and Cody. And uh, counting down in about 30 seconds to tickets on sale. We've been giving them away, with them before you can buy them all week, for Alabama! Alabama. Dusty Slay, Gary Allen, Bridgestone Arena, July, July 19th. Having they a good time. They wanted, having a good time and wanted to wait till the heat and humidity <laughs> got just right in Nashville for that. So well, having fun. Having fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we will see you Monday. We'll be having a good time. Bye. Yes, we will.